What's up, everybody? This is Trista. Please subscribe to this league. Tap the bell, comment below, and give us a like. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is bad, Marty. This is so bad. There's so much worse than I thought it would be ever. He was just, Damian Lillard was just talking about being committed to this franchise for the rest of his life. And now it, it appears there is no good outcome. It appears there is a no-win situation here on our hands. My first thought is this. If it's true, if we must get rid of Damian Lillard because Damian Lillard wants to leave, and we'll get to how we got here in a second. But my first and foremost thought, it hit me like a ton of bricks. What does it feel like as someone like yourself who had a team that did not go to the playoffs for 11 straight years and were... Dog shit. They were dog shit. Laughing stocks, yeah. They were laugh the laughing stock of the league, which is, it was an intentional thing, too. Like, there were stars, moved, pieces. It was bad, lottery picks, a plenty. Mm-hmm. What is it like emotionally in the middle of an NBA season, no- knowing that your team is not even going to be in the conversation? Well, the funny thing is, I I kind of got used to it, like, in a way. And How like- long did that take? <sighs> Like, I don't know. I, I got excited and wrapped up in the draft. That's what I guess, like, got me through it. That was, like, my therapy was watching draft YouTube videos. Did you watch games? Like, uh, a lot of games? Like, a lot of college games? No. Like, I, did oh, you oh, watch a lot of NBA, NBA games? Uh, I would follow. I would follow for sure so and, and root no. for losses. So, no. You didn't watch games. So, emotionally, you basically checked out of the entire NBA season and really looked at college games for who your team in the top five could potentially draft. Is that what you're telling me is what a Suns fan did for 11 years? Yeah, that was my coping mechanism, yep. I've never been there before. Yeah, and I would joke and say things like, oh, that was a really good loss. We needed that loss. We needed that loss. Yeah, that uh, sounds, what a bad win. That sounds awful. Yeah, honestly. no, I'm, I'm not saying it was fun, but that's that's how we did it. Sacramento Kings, Orlando Magic, Phoenix Suns, Knicks for a long time, Nets for a long time, Rockets for a long time. A um, lot of losses, a lot of rebuilds. Philly, obviously, with yep. the process. Portland in 31 years that I started watching games when I was four. Mm-hmm. In 31 years, there's never been a real rebuild. Yeah, it's kind of just been, been bad retooling. Teams yeah. retooling. There's never been a send a marquee star out in the middle of his prime, get pieces and picks, and start like scorched earth. <sighs> that would be scorched earth. And on top of that, not only would it be scorched earth, now you've just signed. Portland is a woke city, fake woke city, we'll call them. Like they are the least diverse city in America that cares truthfully not a lot about people of color in reality, but they talk about it a lot. And they also care about social, we're totally off script. They also (laughs) talk about social issues a lot. They've been burning the city down for a hundred straight days, more than that. And they are even madder about Chauncey Billups hiring than they are about whatever else is happening there. I had a friend text me last night that if they end up hiring Chauncey Billups, he'll never watch Portland Trailblazers games again until he's gone. And now we'll have no reason to watch them anyway. <laughs> and now and now that there's no real loss in that because if Damian Lillard ends up deciding he wants to go, We will have nothing. I won't watch games. I will. I don't know what I'll do. I have no idea how to process this emotionally. I'm working through it. I'm working through it right now. (laughs) Like I'm literally thinking about what I will do. 2004 to 2006, we massively underperformed. We had uh, Mo Cheeks out, Nate McMillan in, no rebuild. 2011 to 2013, injuries team underperformed again. Nate out, Stotts in, no rebuild. We've made a playoffs 11 out of the last 13 years. So You've drafted really well over that time span as well. We've drafted, we've had some hits. Fairly well. We've had yeah. some misses, 
right? We and on and <laughs> you had a lot of very poor luck. I mean, we, we Some go poor with luck, Brand, yep. Brandon Roy, Odin, yep. like all that. Yeah. And, you know, decent coaching and an amazing fan base. So let's go into how this all started. Forever, Damian Lillard has been loyal to the city of Portland because really Damian Lillard has been under, under seen, under, what is that called? Overlooked <laughs> yeah. for a lot of his career. He was not highly recruited. He played for Weber State and Portland was really the only team in the draft that was like gushing over him. So he goes to Portland and he's so happy that he has a team that is wants him to be the franchise guy from day one, right? Mm. I'm never going to leave. I'm loyal. He's got the the O as his letter instead of number on his jersey. Oakland, Ogden, Oregon. What's he going to do? What's the O going to stand for next, right? I don't know. If he leaves, the O has to change. <laughs> he has to go to like something else. So anyway, he told the world, this is where I want to be. I want to be a Portland Trailblazer. I don't care about chips, whatever, whatever, right? And then Chauncey Billups. Then all of the turmoil happens. Damian Lillard says to Chris Haynes, who's his best friend on the planet almost, mm -hmm. that covered the Portland Trailblazers since Damian Lillard got drafted. And they have struck up a very intense, very close relationship. They talk every day. So he tells Damian Lillard, or he tells Chris Haynes, I'm, I like kid, I like Chauncey. Immediately, kid... As we've said before, it takes his name out of the running. Why? Because Portland's been burning for 100 straight days <laughs> and Jason Kidd didn't want that smoke. The Portland smoke came far. It came fast. It came hot. It was like Dracarys. Yeah. You know, it was like that on Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd's like, nah, nah, I'm out. Right? Jason Kidd gets hired in Dallas. Not a peep. Chauncey Billups is the yeah. next one. John C. Bose is the next one. Now everyone is saying these 1997 allegations means that he should never be in power in the NBA. We should hire someone as the leader of our community that has no bad stain that we know for sure never was accused of rape. Fine. Totally yeah. get that. However, then they come after Dame. They say that Dame is complicit in Chauncey Billups hiring process. And. Some of the things that Dame said on Twitter this weekend had me shook. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so he responds, sometimes it's not the people who change. It's the mask that falls off. All alone, that tweet doesn't mean anything. But when you think about Portland as a city turning their back on Damian Lillard and accusing him of being complicit in hiring a rapist. That's bad. Here's another one. Uh, someone goes, I'm sorry you're getting hate for the hiring dame. And he goes, you don't have to be sorry. People going to keep going until sorry don't help. Hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, that's not a good that's one. That's not a good one. That is not a good one. Then the news broke. Chris Haynes came out with an article that said that Damian Lillard... Damian Lillard was unhappy. Let me look at the headline first. Chris Haynes... I don't have it. Let's see. Here we go. Coaching process, inability to build a title contending roster may push Damian Lillard out of Portland. The enormous backlash from the Portland Trailblazers process to hire a new coach and his concerns on whether a championship contender can be built have become factors that may push the franchise player Damian Lillard out the door. League sources tell Yahoo Sports. League sources... Tell Yahoo Sports <laughs> is Damian Lillard tells Yahoo Sports. Yeah. Which is when the real panic set in. Because Dame spoke to Chris and was like, I'm out. If they don't calm the fuck down, I'm out. I've sat with this dog shit franchise for way too long, remaining loyal to a city that... No stars want to go to. Right. I'm a top five player in the league, and I'm committed to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Think about that right, yeah. for a second. That's like if we drafted Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant never left. Yeah, and like, and, and never, d never wanted to leave. Yeah, no, never expressed like any sort of anything. Yeah, and just, was like, I, in fact, I don't even care how my legacy is affected. I care more about the loyalty to this city. Yeah, and then he one one little comment to Chris Haynes about liking Chauncey Billups and Jason Kidd, and everybody's like, "You're complicit in rape." Fuck, fuck Portland. I mean, I I didn't know about this Chauncey thing until 
like a week and a half ago. I'll be honest. We are all NBA fans, you and I. Yeah. Never heard about it. Chauncey Billups was on count NBA countdown for yeah. years. Yeah. He was in talks to be the GM of NBA teams for years. He was in talks to be a head coach when Steve Nash got the job in Brooklyn. He was in the mix then. Not a peep. Why now? Why now? It seems a little performative. It seems performative to me as well. I am staunchly anti-rape, staunchly oh, yeah. anti-domestic violence. Oh, this yes. is an anti-violence podcast. However, but like this feels weird to me. And now Dame might end up leaving. And I am, I'm, sh- I'm shook. All I could say to myself last night was, I don't know, man. I don't know how you fix this because Chauncey's now gotten hired to a five-year deal. Five. Five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> five. Okay. Neil Olshay wanted Chauncey, Neil Olshay, the GM of the Blazers, wanted Chauncey from the very beginning. He, I think Chauncey was waived from the Knicks and Clippers pulled him out. Neil Olshay pulled him out of the dregs, brought him on starting point guard for the Clippers until Chris Paul took over. Him and Chauncey are fucking tight. He wanted Chauncey from the very beginning. He lied to us all, told us that it was going to be 20, 25 names that he was going to look at. And then he did put... Hammond, Becky Hammond, Don Staley in the mix, quote unquote, in the mix, to, flew up to Seattle, met Jody Allen, the owner of the Blazers, mm-hmm. yada, yada, shaking hands, kissing babies, no intention of hiring them, zero intention of hiring no. them. So now you've got a fan base that hates this new head coach. He's here for five years. The ownership loves the GM, loves him. And you've got a star that has a backlash from all these fans about the hiring of this coach that's now there locked in for five years. So what's going to happen next? Yeah, no, I mean, it's not a good situation. And I, I kind of don't really blame Dame. I mean, he's literally been, like like we just said, like the perfect franchise cornerstone for, I mean, he got drafted in 2012. So like going on 10 years now. And now the one thing happens and you're going to lose fan support. Like, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't blame him for being upset. I'll this be is just a Twitter, you know, Twitter can make you feel that the world feels a certain way. Yeah, no, I mean, Twitter's not real life. We Twitter's yeah. not real life, Dame. Just, I'm sorry for Twitter. <laughs> I'm sorry for the gram. I'm sorry for July. Come on, Dame. Like, we love you, Dame. Like, Portland fans, we love you. The last tweet he liked was something about, like, this isn't real, Dame. Like, Portland fans really love you. Like, this isn't... Believe me, like, December rolls around, we're not going to be talking about this anymore. If Dame just weathers the storm like you should, anytime there's backlash on Twitter, somebody will get mad about something else, like, fast. Yeah. So here's possible trades. Man, they're saying Sixers... Basically, the Harden trade, except for Dame. It'll be Dame instead of the way that it was for Harden. Yeesh. They've got a lot of... That's my nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say firmly, that's my nightmare? If if Dame becomes a Sixer, and then Ben Simmons becomes a Blazer... And doesn't have Dame. <laughs> and does not have Dame to make me a Ben Simmons fan, my mind will be in a pretzel. I won't be able to sleep. That would be a tough one to live with. That would that, be tough. That'd be a tough trade. We're hearing Nets, Kyrie plus Claxton plus Joe Harris equals Dame plus Nurk. That's a championship team for the Nets. That is a chip. You've got, you would have then Dame, Harden, uh, Nurk, KD, and... Nurk would be a good piece for them. Yeah, it'd be yeah. a great piece. Yeah. Like, could you imagine mm-hmm. Nurk with KD? Ugh. I'm um, hearing what Warriors? Hearing. I'm reading... I'm not hearing it. I'm reading it. <laughs> Wiseman, Clay plus picks. Don't, don't hate, hate that. that. Yeah, no, don't, don't hate, hate that, that at all. That would make. And you know what? That would be the actual place that I could root for Dame. He's from that area. He's from the sure. Bay. Yeah. From, yeah. He's an Oakland kid. Plays really well. If he went to the Bay and played with Steph, that would be fucking nasty. Steph and Steph Dame would, would be, be nuts. A, Steph is a two. Ugh. Yeah. Man. Heat, Butler, sign and trade. I love Nuggets, too. Uh,. If there's enough pieces, right? Like if Dame actually wants out the door and we can get Kevin Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray and some picks, that's not really a rebuild. That's me still remaining a fan. Yeah, like, no, for sure. Yeah. Clippers, PG, PG and Reggie Jackson. That would put my mind in a pretzel as well. I hope that does not happen. But can we talk about the most delusional trade scenario that I saw all weekend? All right. So Laker fans. I think I know what you're about to say. Laker fans. They are something else, boy. 
This is what one Laker fan tweeted. He tweeted the screenshot of this article. There was a lot of trade scenarios in there, but this is the the delusional one. So people are like, oh, you pulled this out. No, this this was written in print, so I'm going to use it as it was written. Lillard is owed $39.3 million next season. I'm not even going to be able to get through this. <laughs> the first of a four-year, $176 million deal. Mathematically, that's the key piece. <laughs> Mathematically. Mm, the Lakers could sign and trade Dennis Schroeder around 20 to 25 million and Taylor Horton Tucker at 10 million. If he doesn't sign an offer sheet with another team first, plus Kuzma at 13 million, their two tradable first round picks in 2021 and 2027 and a sprinkling of second rounders and cash consideration. <laughs> I want none of those players. They always want to throw in Kuzma as like, <laughs> as oh, dis- disgruntled superstar. Here's Kuzma. Like, he- no, no. Like that is the most. No, that is the most delusional Laker fan thing. Like, I don't want any of those players on my team. Let alone, like, I don't want them on the team with Dame. Do you think I want them on my team without Dame? <laughs> like these guys are wild. Yeah, these dudes are literally off doing their own thing on their own planet and they all think they're the greatest player of all time. Like, Kuzma thinks he's better than Braun. Dennis Schroeder thinks he should be a starter. Taylor Horton Tucker was the key reason that the Lakers didn't go and get Kyle Lowry. All these guys have big, inflated, fat egos. I do like Horton Tucker's potential, but still, yeah, no, this is the most delusional L.A. thing of all time. So when I lived in L.A., this is kind of the only thing that I can think about. Is that when you live in a place like Los Angeles, California, you see 25 year old people with I lived in a building and I lived with this guy who created uh, this YouTube called Bro Science Life. Do you know it? I've sounds heard vaguely, it vaguely familiar. Vaguely it's familiar. like parody of Jim, like Jim okay. comedy. OK. All right. Dude had an orange Bugatti. It's like 20, 25, 27 <laughs> yeah. and a matte black Maserati, and he lived three doors down in my apartment complex. You see, that's a possibility. This guy lives literally a hundred yards from me, Mm -hmm. maximum. Right. And he's living a lifestyle I cannot even fathom. You see that enough? People who are completely idiots with the spoils of success, and you start thinking anything's possible. (laughs) You start thinking Dennis Schroeder and Kyle Kuzma and Taylor Horton Tucker could be a reasonable trade for Damian Lillard because why the fuck not? My guy that lives three doors down from me has a Bugatti. We might as well think we can get Dame. Yeah, maybe that is it. I, I, I think a lot of it is like them being spoiled by AD maybe. Yeah. With But I mean, I don't think Dame's going to be like, oh, I only will go to the Lakers or something like that. I don't, I don't think he's going to give anything like that. No. And also... That's a much bigger slap in the face than any other franchise. If you go to the fucking Lakers, that's ones on site. Well, just that, I mean, yeah, 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 demanding to the Lakers. But even if you, I've always hated the, like, oh, these are my suitors. These are my suitors. These are the teams that I will go to. Like, well, like, no, like you're under contract. Especially, I mean, Damian is is four years left, Four years left. There's never been a superstar ever to demand a trade with four years left on their fucking max, super max deal. Yeah, so you're not getting a, like, a discount, like, no. Deal for him at all. Like No, you, it's yeah. not like when someone's being traded on an expiring. Yeah, no. Like you have four, wherever you go, that place will have four years left. And you know what? Who cares? We can ship you wherever we want because you can't say I'm not going to resign like Anthony Davis did. Right. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. We'll send you to Sacramento. How about that? You like the Bay? We'll send you there. We'll yeah. take, we'll take De'Aaron Fox and... Buddy. Uh, and Buddy Healed and some picks because we know Sacramento's a shit, shitty place. They probably have great lottery picks for the next four years. Hell yeah. Send you out to fucking Sacramento, Dame. And I love Dame. Dame's one of my favorite players <laughs> in the league. <laughs> this is no shot to Dame. I don't think Dame would ever do anything like that because he's a stand up guy. I want to say that. However, if he did, fuck you. Uh, yeah. So Dame was trending 100,000 tweets last night. Um, five year deal, four and one for Chauncey. Um, yeah, and then also the breaking news this morning is that CJ was apparently promised he would not be traded this offseason. Neil Olshea is a slime what ball. What do these GMs think? <laughs> like You are a slime ball. Like, it, 95% of 
people that cover the NBA right now say that CJ's most likely. I talked to someone who's a GM of the league. They texted me. CJ's probably being traded. So when GMs are saying that, and then the the GM of the Portland Trailblazers is quote unquote promise CJ he's not going anywhere. If CJ ends up being traded after he was promised he would not be traded, that's another nail in the coffin for Dame wanting to leave. I yeah. don't know what you do. It's a no win scenario. 